You all know that I am quite into low-code solutions and how low-code can help me tell stuff. In this video, we will talk about low-code and how low-code applications can help me tell stuff to save resources, time and money. Hi. My name is Jan and I am the founder of 360 Digital Transformation. My goal with this podcast is to help Mitelstand to digitalize, optimize and automate their business processes. Today, I have Roland Hermann with me. Roland is an experienced entrepreneur and he is the founder of Zip Visions. With their product Vision X, they help Mittelstand companies, of course some more bigger and smaller companies, but mainly Mittelstand companies with their process and application development without any further ado hi roland welcome to the show hi john how are you thank you i am doing very well uh, thank you for being here and it's our pleasure to have you as a guest can you please introduce yourself sure absolutely yeah. my name is roland herman i'm the CEO and one of the founders of Zip, of Zip Visions and yeah I'm very happy that you that you're having me here today yeah uh, thank you again and as I am quite excited because I'm a low code fan and also I know you uh, I know you are an experienced entrepreneur and therefore I am looking forward to uh, learning from you uh, but let's start with the definition of low code What is low code anyways? Yeah, that's a very good question, especially at the moment, because a lot of people think, you know, everything is low code. Uh, the original um, meaning of low code is, was introduced from the Forrester group. It's um, a visual, uh, you develop applications visually. It's a new way of software development. So instead of using classic code, you use visual approaches for building your applications that can be either a web, a mobile, or a desktop application. Uh, that is basically the, the main purpose of low-code. And sure, that makes it easier for non-technical non guys to build applications. Yeah, uh, but as you said, there is a big misunderstanding or misperception about the low-code. And there is also the no-code uh, and the citizen development Uh, hype, so to say. Uh, what are the differences in between those terms and what would be for our audience to know, okay, uh, that's the most important part uh, that I need to know about low-code? For me, it's not a big difference between no-code and low-code because both stands for this visual development approach and this approach of um, non-technical non guys can really develop. But when you look at the, at the websites, what they're telling about is, then they, then they understand the following uh, about that. So if it's no code, then it's absolutely no code involved in the development. If you see or hear the term low code, then some code is in, involved in the development. So that's basically the difference. But I think that's just word, a little wording and that's it. Yeah, uh, but you have a tool and your company is called Zip Visions. And let me ask you, how exactly Zip Visions help Mittelstein? Um, yeah, so we are a, a local development pro, a, a platform provider. So we build a platform that is named Vision X and we sell them. And we help Mittelstein to really digitalize the processes with them. So they really can now, um, build applications and make processes digital and more efficiently like only the big ones could do in the past now it's uh, possible from the time and from the resources you need to do this so that makes a big change for i think the middle stand to have the same abilities to make also very very complex software if it's necessary and in the past only very big companies has enough money that it's that it's worth to do Mm -hmm. But what are the requirements then uh, for a Mittelstand company to use a low-code platform like yours? Um, uh, let's say basically every, every one of this, uh, these key users of your business department and smart guys, they are willing to deal with uh, 
IT software are able to build software, to build web and mobile applications. Uh, sure, it makes sense to have somebody in the house with a little technical background, don't have to be a professional software developer, to make some good strategic uh, decisions to build the software right, because it's not all about the technology, it's also about um, what user experience makes more sense than others. Yeah? So that could be a person in the company or could also be somebody from outside. It's not, it can be somebody from our partners or yourself or other IT guys. Mm -hmm. So uh, the businesses should have resources, not only from the IT, but also from the maybe IT affinity guys with the, from the business unit and make a team mm -hmm. of maybe an experienced software developer or experienced with technical background and then some citizen developers. So is that the uh, best approach or? Yeah, that's on the long run the best approach because then you create a landscape of applications that really helps you and is, is very good maintainable and has the right stuff in there. If you don't go with that, so you just go with the business department that is working, but maybe after a while you 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 won't, would like to consider some things what you have decided in the beginning. Yeah. In a long term way, you have to create teams, but in the short term, you still can start and grab the low hanging fruits. Absolutely, you can just just you know, get asked from one of our customers, uh, yeah, we have your project and these and that, and we have this MSSQL database and, and we do here managing some to-dos and some extra stuff. And I, I think that's good for low code and they ask us and I say, yes, of course. And then they had a discussion internal with the, uh, with the development department and say, blah, blah, how long you need and so on. And we told them, how long would you need? And I say, um, I think two to three hours. And one of my colleagues does this and then, The, the developer guy said, oh, three weeks. And then, mm -hmm, okay, I think that should be decided already. Yeah. How you do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a great example. That's a great example. Uh, let me build upon that. What are um, the best use cases, the best examples uh, from your clients in Mittelstand? How did they use low code? How did they use Vision X? to digitalize their businesses. And, and the more examples you give, the better for the audience. Okay, great, yeah. It's a very wide um, range of applications you could build, but it's always hard to understand what I can build because if I'm not from a software development background, then I cannot imagine that perfectly. So let's see, you have Excel sheets and you have always the troubles that you're not sure which one is the newest one. And you're not sure if all data from the colleagues is already there and from this department, then it's a good sign. Excel is maybe not good enough anymore for you. So that's starting as a use case and say, instead of using this, I don't know, sharing, moving Excel sheets that is not 100% consistent always, and nobody knows if it's really backup anyways, if the, some of the PCs are away, then maybe the data is away and GDPR, nobody has understood here, right? Maybe. So it could be also sensitive data in there and nobody protects it really. So at the end of the day, uh, that's a good sign to, let's say, bring it down and make an application. And in the most platforms, you can just import the Excel sheet. So you basically, it's very fast that you can move your data to a local platform. And then you have very quickly uh, all the filter and, and, and organization functionality that you need, including user management. So you have the security and the GDPR things already solved. And then you can add more functionalities on it and put it in a complete digital work process. And that's one example you can use. Another example, what you can use it, you know, everybody knows, everybody has some ERP systems in the company, yeah? but sometimes this, 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 screens, these forms are not very easy to use because they are very, how can I say, has to deal with all kinds of different use cases, but you have only this use case and another guy in a different department has a different use case. So it makes sense to make a more simpler, more smarter, more better usable form on top of your ERP system and with a local platform, you can do that. So you connect to your ERP and make a smart thing on top of it or you combine different systems. So let's say you have system A, B, C. Let's say you need 10 systems open in the browser every day and then some desktop applications too. 
to fulfill your job, your daily job. And after a while, it's, 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 it's annoying to copy data from A to C and look and cannot filter perfectly exactly that what you need. So you could combine it in a, in, a, in a screen or in screens or in reports that you need or that you can directly send to your manager and you have it yeah, and don't have to think every day about it and, and searching for the mistakes that maybe happened in the past. That's another use case that you could have. Um, you can make some mobile apps. Yeah? So let's say you want not to enter everything. So you keep, give, uh, let's say like manufacturing business. So give, give the shop floor, so the, the area where everything is produced, give them a mobile app for some quality checks, for feedbacks of, of lean production, yeah? So that, you know, always, this is the problem when we build this kind of uh, um, product, yeah? So you, or you, you use it for on-site support services. So let's say if your machines are very complicated and you, let's say you build 500 machines a year, so very specific machines, and then maybe you need also to do the support on site at the customer side because it's not easy to move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have customers like that's a case or a piston bullet, they're building a snow groomer. So that's a, a machine that is when it's in the skiing area, you cannot go to the to the service office and drive with the with the piston bully to the service. That is not working because it is a very high-tech machine and it's not allowed to drive on a normal uh street yeah so you need to make the service in the skiing area and it has to work because if the new snow coming then everything should look perfect for the, the for the people that are coming yeah so that's use cases i think i have 10 more but maybe i give the word back to you john yeah but uh, it was so uh, important and exciting to hear so i kept my silence and uh, listened to your use cases uh, so just to summarize for the audience, again, if you use Excel uh, in a collaborative collaborative way, uh, but you are not happy with that, or if you would like to integrate uh, data from source A to source B or C and not to do it manually, or if you would like to avoid any, uh, let's say, cumbersome ERP processes that has to be First, quite expensive. Uh, second, also not very easy to implement uh, ERP processes, or you want to avoid some paper transfer between departments like audit, QM, and shop floor and the production so that you can transfer these information easily via a mobile app or digitalized processes so that you can help. So that's my summary and understanding of what you said. Yes, I have two or three more if you want, John. <laughs> yes, yes, please go ahead. Time. Because sure. I think so they, they are exactly really simple important. Examples. This, this, okay, they great. are really important. Please go ahead. Yeah, simple examples. Let's say you at the moment you always send the same emails every week, you know. And basically it's not necessary that you're asking, is the status of ABC already done or is this in this state? Why you not do instead of that? A, a, a digital work process yeah that you you know that the people has to click on the on the status so it is it, so it's daily up to date you know so that you just need to read then the status instead of asking all the time uh or things what you also can do is let's say if you have a lot of signing things so let's say contracts or documents in your complete process why not on signing digitally and and and, and put it into a process and everything is already stored and at the right place yeah in a document management system or not that is not so important but at the end of the day you have then the process digital mm -hmm. you know what i mean or you define email templates for sending always the same information out to certain people so you store it in your low code application and send it out automatically or by click on a button instead of doing in outlook typing something again and again or copy from somewhere so that's another thing. You can also build very complex systems. We build systems together with customers like a big customer, a big customer portal for Piston Bully, or we make for bigger companies like uh, Maya Werft. It's one of the biggest um, um, ship builders. Um, some applications that are in the productions, yeah, to to use them. So uh, on site management or checking systems for let's say energy companies yeah to check if all the assets are or the, the yeah 
or the locations where they have some built there for, for the electricity, for the network, if it's, if it's up and running. Yeah. Uh, that's more examples. Yeah. Um, you could use it also in, I, I don't know, in some very interesting new business like, I don't know, um, biogas or bio oil. Yeah? So growing new businesses, there are, you know, there is not the, the, the ERP systems, the perfect ones are not existing for them. So build it yourself. Yeah? You don't need to build a new, uh, let's say, SEP or SAGE or something like this. That is existing, that's there. But everything in between the standard software where you always repeat the same things, that's a good sign to mm -hmm. make it yourself. Yeah. And if it's getting very complicated, maybe you need a little support from software. But if it's just the simple stuff, like with the email sending, the signing, you can do it yourself. You don't need a technique. Well, that's that's very important. And also encouraging Mitterstand to go further with the low-code applications and uh, one, one question that I get quite often from the audience is that does uh, low-code applications decrease the workload of IT? Yes, of course, because uh, you get a less regress for new software because uh, uh, the business department can do it themselves. Uh, the best solution is to do it together because then you have the government, the, the, um, you, you need the cooperation kind of, you know, uh, for the infrastructure, for the security, and for some topics that should stay at the IT, uh, in my opinion. But the doing and building software can be shared. And so that's decreasing the, the workload for the IT. And if everything is set up in a, on a platform, yeah, local platform, then it's also secure and all the other questions are fine, you know, because if it's the Excel sheet, these questions are not even get asked. So if it's GDPR conform or not, but in, in general, if it's a software a tool, then all these questions coming up. Yeah. So you cannot, in, you know, uh, ignore them. Yeah. So it's good to work together in my opinion. Yeah? And you, you have that then as a, as a solution. And if you work together, IT and business more closely, then at the end of the day, the business department will not ask so much dumb questions what sometimes come up in the opinion of the IT department. It's not true, it's not dumb, it's just a misunderstanding from the sides. Yeah? And so you reduce the workload for the software development and also for the communication work together. And it's more than just the application. Yeah, so it not only decreases the workload of IT, but also sometimes the workload of business department because the misunderstandings are reduced and the total development time is reduced so that uh, business can also test and give feedback by developing themselves. So the development cycles are reduced. At the end of the day, it could decrease the workload of uh, several departments and also uh, let's say give a quick return on investment because you see the results quicker and you can implement that of course uh, you reduce the, the, the amount of time in the business that's the goal because you want to make something more automatic or more um, um, less error prone so that is important yeah but also what you mean i think in the project of a local project you save all the time on the on the business side and i think that is also the truth and it's also making the, the requirements more on the point if you work together, because you're not wishing for things, yeah? You're designing together and building things together. So you, mm -hmm. it gets more direct for the right solution. And that is important. Exactly. And what I experienced throughout my career and uh, my own business is that generally there are misunderstandings between departments like IT and business so that these misunderstandings need to be either corrected in the future with a mistake or uh, there are other employees that are acting like bridges like project managers product managers so on but by combining them in the development at the same time uh, First of all, the mistakes are seen in the very, very, very first place. Then they could be uh, worked around. And also uh, those uh, media men, so the, those uh, people in the middle can focus on their own workload so that 
all uh, process is uh, enhanced. That's my uh, takeaway from what you have summarized is uh, also aligned with my own experience. I just wanted to add that point. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with your points also with the more process or the, the demonstration of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming more from the IT direction, but you're absolutely right. It's, I think it's, it's very, very, very helpful. And I think just, just do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, one more question coming into my mind, Roland, is you gave uh, some slightly simple examples. Uh, but if you could just give a complex example of what you have developed with a local tool in order for our audience to understand the capability of low code. Okay, what we have built or our customers have built. Sometimes yes. we are involved, sometimes we are not, but that's how it is and that's good. Uh, um, it's, let's say you, it's a very specific project management tool for um, more university oriented areas. Um, customer relation, a, a customer portal, a very complex one. It's basically solves everything from the delivery of the piston bullies or the, the snow groomer till end of life. So it's basically um, the complete maintenance. It's also the, the storing of the, the depth of the, of the snow. So how much snow is in the areas, um, order of the parts. Uh, warehousing of the parts because of the situation that you're in the mountains and you need to repair it on site. Um, and also it's a full system for managing the complete skiing area, including the lifts and, and, and the artificial snow generators. So yeah, that's a very big system. You would use usually millions of euros to build them manually, uh, but we never used to so much amount of money for that. Um, that's what we what is built um let's say some checklist systems with mobile so that you can let's say that is done that is done that is done with, with a little more mm -hmm. complex functionalities in there so map functionality is usually in in, in in mobile apps is very important so let's say uh, on site um how can i say we have government uh, uh, confir confirmations of 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 uh, so when you have on-site uh, reviews of something, you know, like mm -hmm. a machine or a location, if it's correctly built or delivered, then you can go through it and check all the, the, the things, what has to be done, and you can, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, immediately uh, give a, a confir confirmation for it. Yeah, taxi app <laughs> to book a taxi. Um, everybody understands that placements of Excel sheets. Yeah, but I think that's different ones. Fair enough and uh, yeah, helpful enough. But uh, yes, uh, you uh, are coming from Austria, and when someone is coming from Austria, of course, it's a good example to use skiing <laughs> and yeah, uh, and give um, very interesting processes, though. Uh, so it's good to imagine how complicated processes can be managed uh, via losing, uh, using a uh, a low code uh, platform and thank you for these great insights roland um the last question that i have to you is what's your top suggestion for mittelstand owners or managers uh, to apply right away i think they should go to your key users and ask them uh, which process could be done more efficiently or not so much you know making less pain there for them so uh, because in a middle stand company, for sure, you can talk better to your people, to your employees than in a big company where you have, I don't know, departments over departments. And maybe then somebody is not uh, thinks he, yeah, <laughs> it should have to be asked first before you ask somebody else. Yeah, that's a big advantage. And they will give you the information right away. And that's also usually the people they has the right skills to use a local platform because they know exactly what is important mm -hmm. and maybe give them a young guy or a more tech, a, tech, a, tech, a, a more techy business guy on the side. If it's, you know, people that are maybe not so familiar with IT and then let them build together the local platform. Uh, the, the, first, the first use case that you have a success that helps you make it not too big, make it more small, 
because you learn also in this process and then go from there. Yeah, so start small, start now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and ask the right people in your company. Yeah. Because, you know, if you ask the right key users, they will help to tell that what they build is good and you use it. You know what I mean? Because you, you need the users also. It yeah. should not be a, a, a management project. It should be a project that really delivers and local delivers. Yeah. So then also start small, start now by asking your process owners, by asking your guys on the shop floor, by asking your guys on the uh, procurement. So the key players. Yes. We, we call it technically process owners, but for the audience, let's say key players, as you said, key employees, and then combine these inputs and choose a relatively simple but useful uh, case process. As you said, maybe a shitty Excel uh, that can, can be converted or maybe a data integration from five, six, seven different sources. But then imply right away to see the benefits. Exactly on the point, John. Thank you. <laughs> I thank you. I just summarized what you have said. Those are all uh, valuable inputs by you. Uh, yeah, Roland. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for these valuable insights and uh, use cases. Variety of use cases, uh, starting from digitalizing Excel sheets also combining with how to uh, manage uh, skiing uh, arenas uh, or mountains, so to say. That's a great example too. But the last question is how people can find you. Uh, yes, um, we are available in the internet or on LinkedIn. You can reach me uh, over our website that is uh, visionx.sibvisions.com. It's our product side, or you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm a very, I'm connected with a lot of people. I have looked more than four thousand already, so oh. you can just I, I really answer. Um, and um, my name is uh, Roland Hermann, yeah, so Roland and O with dot, so O E uh, at Sibitions.com, or you just could give my name in and, and add the company Sibitions, and then you will find me. We will also add those in the description and somewhere over here, you will have these QR codes just directly to add you. But Roland, uh, thank you so much. Uh, your inputs from Austria was uh, quite helpful. I've also learned um, from you and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, Thank you very much. Uh, wish you and everybody a great day and um, thanks for watching. Thank you.